part of the chapter um, because it's a little bit different. This is all about Boolean logic. Um, you can take an entire semester course in college just on Boolean logic. Um, so obviously we're just gonna scrape the surface of this. Um, we're gonna focus on three logical operators or three Boolean operators, not and and or. From those three, we can build whatever we want. Um, this topic is certainly relevant for computer science, which is why we're studying it. Um, we can represent the states of systems. We can, um, different conditions of algorithms using all these different um, logical operators. Um, we will learn a little bit about how we can simplify Boolean expressions to make it a little bit easier to code or evaluate. Um, but this is not just a computer science thing. Um, this is also plays a big role in terms of like digital design, like electrical engineering, circuit design. Um, circuits are, you know, digital circuits are fundamentally made up of not ands and ors and a few other operations. Um, and there are like physical chips that implement these operations. And so you can build complex circuits um, that perform all sorts of different things based on all this Boolean logic. And you can simplify it and model it, and that's why it's a whole semester course. Um, but even though it was like decades ago, I still remember like in, in my class focused on this in, in more of an electrical engineering class, building a traffic light controller from and and or and not gates to determine when the light should be green and yellow and red and have the cars not crash into each other. Um, and it's all based on this logic, but it's built with discrete hardware um, and you provided electrical inputs and electrical outputs come on to change the lights and everything, which was really kind of cool. Um, we're gonna focus on it obviously more in a computer science context, but I just wanted to share like it's not just a computer science thing. Um, this has other applications as well. These are the three operators we're gonna focus on. And even though there's only three, we can combine them in very powerful ways. So in this table, I've summarized their names, not and and or. Um, I showed you what symbol we use in Java. Um, also share what symbol we use in Python, because that you may be more familiar with that. And I shared their precedence. So for example, if we have multiple logical operators in the same expression, we evaluate the not operator first, then the and, and finally the or. So the not operator um, is the exclamation point. We saw that yesterday. Um, the and operator is two ampersand characters. That's shift seven is how you get that ampersand character. Um, and the or operator is two vertical pipes, um, which is shift in the key above your enter key. That's how we do that. Um, these symbols come from the C programming language. I honestly don't know where the C programming language got them from, um, but that Java adapted them from C, um, even though it would have been nice if they had used the Python approach of just spelling the word out. Um, but regardless, here we are. These are the symbols we use. We're gonna define the behavior of each of these three, and then we're gonna see how we can use that to, uh, to prove certain Boolean like laws. So the tool we use to evaluate Boolean expressions as well as to just define these operations is called a truth table. Um, a truth table is surprise, surprise, a table with true and false values. And so a we have a column for each variable under consideration. And since the not operator um, only has one operand, we just have one variable A and so we add a row for all possible combinations of the variable A. Well, that's pretty easy. A is either false or A is true, that's it. Then we create a column where we apply the operator. So here's our not operator. And the way we complete this column is we simply look at A for a given row and we apply the not. And not is pretty easy. Like if you just say, well, what is not false? If it's not false, it's true, okay? If it's not true, it's false. This is also called the, comp the logical complement. We're changing false to true and true to false. Okay. So the not operator is pretty easy. We just look at the one value and make it the other. Not too bad. The and and or operators are a little bit more um, involved because they have two operands. 
Um, so we'll have two variables here, variable A as, long, as well as the variable B. So if we have two variables, we need a row for every possible combination of true and false for variables A and B. And so the number of rows we need is always two to the number of variables. So two squared is four, so we need four rows here. If we had three variables, which is what shows up in the practice for homework, two to the third is eight, we'll have eight rows. Um, each row, I usually start false, false, and I work my way up. So false, 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 true, true, false, true, true, to cover all four possible combinations. The definition of the AND operator is pretty much how we use it like in everyday speech. So we say, um, if, a and, if A is true and B is true, then we do something, that means they both have to be true, right? And so the only time that the AND operator evaluates to true is when A is true and B is true. Then A and B are true. If either one or both is false, the AND operator evaluates to false. So this column basically is the definition of the AND operator in terms of when it's false and when it's true based on its two operands. The OR operator is pretty much how we use it like in everyday speech. We can say if A is true or if B is true, then it's true. Um, but I do want to be extra clear that if A is true um, and B is true as well, if they're both true, the OR is still true. So it's either one or both, the OR evaluates to true. In fact, the only time that A or B is false is when A is false and B is false. Okay? Um, so A or B is only false when A is false and B is false. So this column is our definition for the OR operator. As we get to more and more complicated expressions, um, it can be hard to evaluate them just in your head, which is why I share with you this tool of a truth table. The truth table can be, um, it's very methodical, um, it's very deliberate, uh, therefore it can be a little tedious, but if you use it, you will never get one of these questions wrong <laughs> um, because you're only applying one operation at a time, okay? So we're gonna practice this together, okay? Um, we're going to practice it in the context of something called De Morgan's Law. In fact, what I just said verbally when I said the, when I said the only time that A or B is false is when A is false and B is false, <coughs> that's actually a statement of De Morgan's Law. Okay? It's the second one here. A or B, not A or B, is equivalent to not A and not B. We can also do it this way. We can say not, and then in parentheses, A and B, is equivalent to not A or not B. The way we translate between these is we take this, the and or the or that's in the parentheses, and we change it to the other one. So if it's and, we change it to or. If it's or, we change it to and. And then we negate each of the operands inside the parentheses. So we write this as not A, not B, not A, not B. A and B can be arbitrarily complicated Boolean expressions. Um, we're going to evaluate it here just as a single variable that's either true or false. The reason why this is useful is sometimes our code can become significantly easier when we transfer an expression we've written this way to this way. Or we can gain some new insight perhaps as well. When it comes to like electronics and digital circuits, our circuit can become substantially easier when we do some of these transformations um, as well. Um, but for now, we're just going to basically prove that this is true. So I told you De Morgan's Law is true, but let's actually prove it. Don't trust me. So we're gonna prove it with a truth table. If you just tried to do this, the, these two expressions at the top, there's just too great a chance for making a careless mistake. So here's that deliberate truth table approach where we only ever do one operation at a time. So I want to go through this together, and then you'll have the opportunity to practice on your own. But on your scratch paper, you need to write, um, have this table. So you need to have the table header, 
eight, which has one, two, three, four, five, six, seven columns, as I've written there. <coughs> and below that, you'll need four rows. If you don't want to write out false and true, I get that. I usually just use T and F. But go ahead and get started on this table. And then we're going to complete, once you have this basic part written, we're going to go one column at a time. So I can show you how this works and how it makes it really straightforward. The key to this whole technique is that we only ever look at, at most, two columns. And then we apply the operation based on those two columns and fill in a third. So even though there's many columns in our table here, we're going to ignore all the columns but the two under consideration. And if we do that, it makes it really easy. Now, a little bit of background, like how did I know which columns to create? Well, I did it based on order of operations of evaluating this left expression first. So the first thing we'd evaluate in this left expression is A and B. So I made a column for A and B. The second operation that we'd evaluate in the left expression is the not. And so I added a column for not, and then in parentheses, A and B. I did the same thing for the right expression. The first operation we'd evaluate is not A, so I made a column for that. The second operation we'd evaluate is not B, so I made a column for that. And the third operation we'd evaluate is OR of the result of those previous two, so I made a column for that. Okay, so that's how you come up with these columns. Because when you make your truth table, you'll know your, what your final column is, but you're going to need to determine those intermediate col col columns as well. All right, let's try this first column. So we're trying to fill in A and B, which is actually what I showed you on the previous slide. But the way we do that is we're just going to go row by row. And so I'm annotating here in orange the columns we're looking at, and then we're filling in the other column. So false and false is false. False and true is false. True and false is false. True and true, hey, they're both true. We finally have a true. So again, we're only looking at these two columns, A and B, to evaluate, to perform the operation and complete the third column. Again, that's not too bad. That's just our definition of the AND operator. This next column is much more important. This is where things can be, you can make things really easy on yourself or overly complicated. Yes, the variables A and B are here. And yes, there's the AND here but we do not want to look at these columns. The thing in parentheses, we've already evaluated in the third column. So we're only gonna look at the third column. I've grayed out A and B because we're not even gonna look at them. We're just gonna look at the third column and we're just going to apply the not operation. Doesn't get any easier than this. False becomes true, true becomes false we complete that fourth column. So now we re know the result of this expression on the left. And so we're trying to prove if for all values of A and B, the expression on the left is logically equivalent to the expression on the right. So now we need to evaluate the expression on the right. So the next column up is not A. We're only, I should have grayed out column B here. I need to go back and fix that. So we're only gonna look at column A here, annotated in orange. And if it's false, not A is true. And if it's true, not A is false. And we complete this column. All right, go ahead and do the same for the not B. And we'll see if we're on the same page.
but not B should look like this. False becomes true. True values become false. All right, I'm going to have you do the last column here. But again, when you're doing this last column, the thing in parentheses you have already have a column for. Just look at this column. Look at this column. Apply the OR operation. We only ever apply one operation at a time. So go ahead and fill in that last column, and we'll compare notes. And it should look like this. True or true is true. True or false is true. False or true is true. False or false, yeah, they're both false. It's going to be false. Got to have at least one true in there. So since we were asked to prove De Morgan's Law, the way that we say that De Morgan's Law is actually correct is we look at the column for the expression on the left. We look at the column for the expression on the right, and for every possible combination of true and false for the variables a and b, we see that they're the same. When the one on the left is true, the one on the right is true. When the one on the left is false, the one on the right is false as well. That's how we prove De Morgan's Law. So this truth table is useful for certainly proving something like De Morgan's Law. It's also useful for whenever you're trying to evaluate a Boolean expression. Here's what I want you to practice with, um, and we'll compare notes tomorrow. There's another, um, there's something called the distributive property, which is similar to the distributive property, you know, from math class, like when you're like multiplying something um, into an expression, but here it's involving ors and ands. Um, so A or B and C in parentheses is logically equivalent to A or B and A or C. And we can, oops, swap the ands and the ors as well. So for practice, this will be a great practice. I want you to try this. I want you to prove that A or B and C is logically equivalent to A or B and A or C. You're going to have to make a truth table. To help you out, we now have three variables involved. Two to the third is eight. There are, you're going to need eight rows because there's eight possible combinations of true and false for three variables. Okay. Your first row is going to be false, false, false. Your last row is going to be true, true, true. And you're going to have six more in between. You also will need eight columns. Um, we've got three variables, and then we have five other operations that we're performing. We have this and, this or, this or, this or, and finally this and. So you're going to have eight columns. You're going to have eight rows. And if you just do one operation at a time, it's going to work out perfect. And at the start of class tomorrow, we'll compare truth tables.